Hi everybody, welcome to Elementary Classical Mechanics, the subject where observing the universe suggests new mathematical and computational approaches that can literally transform our way of modeling and predicting any aspect of the world. Welcome back to the fourth lecture of chapter 11. In this chapter, I'm going to derive an alternate form of the equations of motion for a particle of constant mass m in a central force field using the constant of motion that we've derived. Okay, we've already derived equations of motion for a particle of constant mass m in a central force field, and we derived this constant of the motion. All right, now one of the ways we can use that constant of the motion is to rewrite this equation in this form just bringing the m over to the right hand side and using the fact that theta dot squared would be h squared over r to the fourth pull up you from the constant of motion plugging that in we get a nonlinear differential equation and using this constant of motion we have decoupled the equations so i mentioned this earlier if we can solve this equation and we can. You know we can, because when I wrote down all the possible way, well, solve means we can compute the phase portrait. We can write the, formally write the solutions in terms of an integral expression, because the force, that is everything here that doesn't depend on r double dot, is only a function of r, the position variable. And if you go back and look at the list of forces and their functional dependence when we first looked at Newton's equations, you can see that this is one that I can solve. All right, great. Now we're going to do something else with that same equation, the equation for r, r double dot, that looks a bit weird at first, but it gives us a quite a remarkable result. We're going to change variables. We're going to let r equal 1 over u. We're going to differentiate that once and twice. Plug, pl solve, write the equation in terms of u and u double dot. Okay, so a lot of uh, chain rule going on here. And you all are quite good at that by now. We're going to do the chain rule twice with this new r equal 1 over u. We're going to use this using the fact that r theta dot squared is r h squared over r to the fourth. One of the r's cancel, but r is 1 over u, so this reduces to this expression. Now, and f of r is now f of 1 over u. So using these expressions we've derived above, the equation for r double dot becomes this. We're now we're using theta as the new dependent variable. Okay. dr dt is dr d theta d theta dt. Okay, there's a bit of a calculus and algebra, but pretty straightforward, I think. Alright, now this is an fascinating equation because the left hand side is a linear equation. We were dealing with a nonlinear equation earlier and what kind of linear equation is it? Well, this is just the harmonic oscillator equation, the one equation on the left. Now if f of r, so I'm not finished yet, and now comes the punchline, if f of r depends is is of the form of some constant k, doesn't it could be positive, negative, whatever. K over R squared. So and this is the form that the gravitational uh, law of attraction between two masses is. If you plug that in here, f of one over u 
is k u squared. But, the but on the bottom, we have a u squared. So the u squareds cancel. And we've turned that nonlinear equation into a linear equation with this nonlinear change of variables. And it's just a harmonic oscillator equation, sines and cosines. And you can solve this for u as a function of theta and then work backwards to the original equations. Okay, so I'm not going to go into this in any more detail because there's still quite a lot of material to go through. But this is a very interesting and is a, is a classic tool for understanding central force motion in a way where you can solve these equations and understand them. Of course, you have to trace tr through the, through the uh, transformations of variables to go from the end back to the beginning, but that's just algebra. Okay, that's enough of alternative equations of motion. You can see where we're going next. We want to show that central force fields, as we've defined here, are actually conservative. So that's it for now. See you next time.